Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, was inaugurated today for a six-year term. He's been in power since 2013. And as foreign affairs correspondent Nick Schifrin reports, Maduro has presided over an economic catastrophe. Inside Venezuela's Supreme Court today, President Nicolas Maduro walked into a hero's welcome, greeted by a phalanx of patriotic children. And as seen on state TV, he swore to build what he called 21st century socialism. But while he flashed the sign of a victorious nation, his critics say he's created a failed state. In what used to be Latin America's wealthiest country, citizens lack basic necessities. Venezuelans in Caracas have demanded access to a supermarket, even if the shelves were empty because of a shortage of food. Medicina. Medical patients have protested a shortage of medicine. Children play in the dark because of a shortage of power. And a shortage of water means Venezuelans bathe with runoff from a mountain. 170 miles southwest of Caracas in the farmland of Cojeda State, 32-year-old Luis Cortez Oteza represents the country's lost hopes. He's the son of a farmer and was successful until hyperinflation and government regulation raised costs above revenue. Now he grows only enough for his family to survive. We are working in vain, wasting our youth. We have no future here. The economic freefall is from falling oil prices and failed economic policies. The government printed more money and bills became so worthless, women turned them into art. Inflation could hit 10 million percent. That's how many bolivars it costs to buy a chicken. It takes a stack of almost worthless paper to buy toilet paper. All of it sparked the region's largest ever exodus. More than three million Venezuelans have fled their homes and created a humanitarian crisis, says Woodrow Wilson Center senior advisor Ben Gadan. Conditions in Venezuela are heartbreaking in terms of the collapse of the medical system, the extraordinary levels of violence. It's become apocalyptic to live in that country. And then the conditions that these migrants find themselves in in neighboring countries. Maduro was elected last May in a presidential election the U.S. called unfree and unfair. He's maintained power through corruption and ruthlessness, says Gadan, who was President Obama's National Security Council South America director. The president of Venezuela has been willing to repress dissent ruthlessly and relentlessly in terms of attacking the political opposition, dismantling Venezuelan democracy, destroying what had been the wealthiest country in Latin America, um, dismantling every democratic institution under the sun in order to stay in power. This week, the U.S. imposed sanctions on Venezuelans involved in what it called corrupt currency exchange. The U.S. has also imposed sanctions on Maduro, his wife, a vice president, and a foreign minister. And today in a statement, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the U.S. will, quote, continue to use the full weight of U.S. economic and diplomatic power to press for the restoration of Venezuelan democracy. The troika of tyranny in this hemisphere, Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua, has finally met its match. The administration has made the criticism regional. In November, National Security Advisor John Bolton aimed his sights at Maduro and Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega and Cuba's new President Miguel diaz Canel as the U.S.'s ideological opponents. They are clownish, pitiful figures more akin to Larry, Curley, and Moe. The three stooges of socialism are true believers but they worship a false god. Yesterday, Maduro accused the U.S. and an informal regional alliance known as the Lima Group of plotting to overthrow him. A coup d'etat ordered by Washington and the Lima cartel is underway against the legitimate and constitutional government over which I preside. The U.S. has considered imposing more pain through an oil embargo, but the state would likely collapse, increasing the humanitarian crisis. Gadan and others want Venezuela's neighbors to bring that pressure. There are a whole series of measures you can do to increase the diplomatic isolation and the economic pressure on Venezuelan elites, and to encourage some of those elites to break with the regime and, and make a moral decision to be part of the solution in Venezuela. Latin American countries simply have not taken those steps. Maduro faces some internal opposition, and no Latin American leader has ever survived this level of hyperinflation. But for now, senior U.S. officials say he can likely resist external pressure and stay in power, despite the pain inflicted on his people. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin.